Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know Where You Literally Know What You Ought To Know. Joining me today is none other than my brother. I'm excited to have him, even though I had to drag him to come for the interview. Mashallah, tabarakallah. And uh, he's someone that I respect and we ask that Allah make him better than what we think of him. But before you get to know my guests, I don't really have a topic, but yeah, we're going to roll around, inshallah. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Salam alaikum, Habibi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, Habibi. This is your first time on camera? Yes, it is. Am I right? Yes. Are you tense? Yeah, very much. Are you, how do you feel? A little nervous, a little bit. Did you know that you'd be on Did You Know? Uh, no. Now I you know. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> No, I don't. Inshallah. No, uh, you know, I, I, I also wanted to discuss with you about, you know, your journey uh, in uh, knowing the dean, understanding the dean. Because when I was little, what happened was, um, you know, I took inspirations from you when you came back. And you told me there was a foundation called Musa bin Umar Foundation. And you were taking me there. I met you, mashallah, you know. And I saw the way you do your brother's circle, the sisters and the, and the circle and the likes of it. We also eat and the likes of it. And most of the things I learned there had so much impact in my life. But what really had more impact in my life was the akhlaq you showed towards me, how we were interacting. I didn't have a car then. And you pick me up, you know, meet me here, we'll go, mashallah, tabarakallah. And so that had a great impact in my life. But... What I want to talk about today is a lot of young Muslims out there, they want to go back to Allah, they are finding it hard to, you know, to, to build their connection with their maker. And I believe that, you know, prior to your trip to, where do you school again, Sheikh? Uh, Bradford. Bradford. Yeah, Bradford. You know, I want, yeah. want us to know your life. How, how were you before your, your trip to Bradford or in Bradford before coming back to Nigeria? Assalamu <laughs> alaikum wa rahmatullah. Subhanallah. Well, it's, it, it, kinda, it, it takes me back a little bit to, I mean, it's been well, 10 years or so wow. I mean, since the last time. I mean, subhanAllah, it's been, it's been a while. I've, I've actually tried to remember what happened during that period. But alhamdulillah, uh, it's, it's been a really good journey. Mm. And um, I would like to say the change started from Nigeria. Oh, really? I think, yes, it started from Nigeria. So? I think um, when I, after I came back from my uh, degree in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I met a couple of brothers here uh, and my cousin, I have, I, have, I have a cousin who had a, a lot of influence on me. Wow. Yes, um, I think I, I began to admire the way he changed and mm. alhamdulillah, so suddenly, I mean, gradually, I, I mean, the, his influence rubbed off on me and then I decided, I think, yeah, it, it was time to take let's, that let's, next let's, step. Let's, let's take a <laughs> break here. Yeah? Uh, you know, you know, subhanAllah, you said your, your, your friends and perhaps your cousin as well had an influence yeah, uh, yes, on you. Yes, you yes, know, yes. a lot of people think that their friends don't have influence on them. Like I have people who will say, you know, yeah, my friend is a drug addict. My friend is a smoker. May Allah, you know, bring them back to the right path. We love them. We care for them. But they say, you know, ah, I can't be a smoker even if my friend is, is, is so and so and so. Mm -hmm. But subhanAllah, al maru ala dini khalili, right? Uh, exactly. A friend is in the religion of his friend and that means a friend is in the way of his friend. Yes. So subhanAllah, you know, how do you see friendship in our generation today? If you're coming back to your point whereby your cousin really affected you, those you surround yourself with. It's, it's quite important, yeah, Sheikh. I think it's, it's, it's very, as you mentioned the hadith, and it's very important you surround yourself with good people around. Mm -hmm. I mean, just a couple of minutes ago, I think I met Brother Pen Abdul and right. just, I mean, just, just, just that few minutes of interaction, mm. he, he put something in my mind and which Obviously, I'm going to go back and contemplate upon yes, a lot. I mean, these are, these are the kind of friends you want in your life. Those who make you contemplate about the akhirah mm -hmm. and you, those who make you reflect upon what you're doing and wanting to be better generally in your mm -hmm. life. I think that's, that's actually very important. I mean, right. we tend to think that we can interact with people. I mean, I, first of all, I think it's very important not to be judgmental. Yes. I mean, we, we go through different tests and different challenges mm -hmm. individually in our lives. We don't know... I mean, a lot of things, a lot of influences, a lot of environmental factors, I mean, parents and all that, they affect the way someone is being brought up in his mm. life. So it's important for us not to judge. Right. I mean, I've been around people who, so to, quote unquote, who smoke, who do a lot of things which I, I don't necessarily agree with. Mm. But I mean, gradually, you have to, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be so, so quick to judge. We don't hate the sinner, we hate the sin. Well, I mean, that, 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 that quote, I mean, I, I tend to have, have, have a little issue with that quote, mm -hmm. not to hit the sinner. Yes, I mean, sometimes 
those two are mutually exclusive. I mean, you can't really. But yes, I agree with I, I, the whole concept. Yes, I agree with. I mean, the fact that you're not necessarily you, you don't like the sin. But yes, you don't judge the person who is committing it. That's very important. But gradually, I mean, you have to understand people. I think it's very important mm. we understand people and speak to people as well. I mean, don't be so quick to dismiss people out of your lives. Right. I mean, the fact that they're around you and they do these things, your influence rubs off on them. And I've, sure. I've had people like that whom mm. they see what I do sometimes and we, we move around with them. And gradually, they leave that bad habit. They do just, just you don't, sometimes you don't even have to say anything to them. Well, like, mm. you, know, if I have to, you don't necessarily have to quote verses of the Quran or Hadith. But the fact that you're moving around the same circle, and they see, I mean, when it's time to pray, you remind them, let's go and pray. Right. Let's, go, let's go to circles to meet other brothers. I mean, something touches them deep inside. Mm. And then gradually, they begin to think, I mean, this is not the path I want to take in my right. life. And right. These are other brothers that have excelled. And they don't do these kind of things. Because we were made to think that some of these things... Uh, they're addictive and we're dependent on them. I, I, like a brother used to tell me, he says when he smokes, it it's, 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 uh, it's brings him tranquility and all that. I mean, he feels peace of mind. Hmm. I mean, now we, we all know that this is all the work of shaitan. I mean, right. there's no way smoking. Uh, we all know Allah says what actually gives you tranquility of the heart and Absolutely. all that. So Absolutely. these are all things that we're made to think. But gradually, inshallah, you, you begin to see changes in these people. And hmm. I think that's quite important that you don't judge them. You just become that good influence around them. And inshallah, I think with the, with the right sincerity, you, they begin to change in their life. So it's, it's, it's quite important. I agree with you. Yeah. Having no, good yeah. friends around mm. you, right. it's, it's actually very important. I mean, that's, that was the genesis of the whole brother's circle and all that. Just to surround yourself with like-minded individuals who, who are passionate about the deen. Mm -hmm. And from there, I mean, I've met people like you, people like Brother Pen Abdul, people like uh, Brother Abu Bakr. I mean, different people around them. Um, whom we all have that passion to do something for the day and do something for the youth. I think it's, these are all the kind of things we, we want in our lives. So Inshallah, yeah. I think the woman needs more of uh, avenues whereby brothers can come because if you look at it, there are so much, you know, Jahannam like places where people go and do a lot exactly. of crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. So in, instead of us judging people and insulting them, why don't we create these avenues as well? Invite them to come see the beauty of the deen. Yeah. And just as you said, I think it's about um, you as an individual, you understand that, okay, yeah, this is the beauty of your deen, how you present it to others, really Really matter yeah. and I was telling someone that subhanallah I think that I was telling Meng this that a lot of people give advice not because they want to actually make you change but because giving you advice make them feel sure. good exactly <laughs> I don't I, get I, my I agree point. With that one, yeah yeah because it makes them feel good like okay I've given the advice so what well, well I, actually, I agree with you I mean this this life we have to just admit it this life this life isn't easy for I mean the, the world we live in right now it's not right. easy for the youth sure. well, I, actually, especially you guys I mean I, I was telling my friends a while back I said how do you live in Abuja I mean, how do you people live in Abuja, those who live in Abuja? I mean, there's so much fitna in this, in Abuja, wallahi, no, honestly, wallahi. I, I was talking to my sheikh, I was telling him, yeah, sheikh, I mean, subhanAllah, just the, t just the few days I've been in Abuja, spent. there's so much fitna in this Abuja, because I mean, I'm used to Kano right now, so I know, yeah. I mean, Kano, we're not saying, it's, it's, it's way better, it's, obviously it's better than, because Kano are very uh, conservative in terms Absolutely. of, we have people like them, Hizba, who go about, go about enforcing things and all that, but Abuja, Obviously, it's, it's not the same thing. So I was asking, I mean, I was telling my sheikh, how do you survive in this, in, in the, this fitna ridden uh, state? And he says, he told me, well, let me tell you something. He says, do you, know, you want to know how I actually survive in Abuja? I said, yes, yeah, sheikh. He said, he told me, I only do, I mean, I only go to places I'm supposed to. Like, and when I wake up in the morning, I go to school, I teach, mm. I come back, maybe, uh, and, and I stay indoors, except I actually, I really have to go out. Right. says, I, because I don't, I mean, he doesn't go to all these eateries where you find, and he doesn't go to places where, there's tendency for fitna, basically. That's what he said. He said, just go to places you're supposed to maybe go visit a relative and come back home. Mm. He doesn't go out. He stays and studies in the room or go to, goes out to teach and he comes back. He doesn't go to, he doesn't go out anywhere that there's tendency for fitna. Because it, it's very difficult. Well, like, we just think we have to admit it to ourselves that the youth nowadays, there's so much promiscuity and so much sexualization of everything that it's, it's I mean, Iman is so difficult now to maintain that level of Iman. So we have to, I mean, if we don't support each other, there's no, I mean, no, no one will. Wallahi, Absolutely. no one will. So all Absolutely. these little uh, avenues, as you mentioned, that would create, and you said, I, I have an, inf I, I have, I've had an influence on you. Wallahi, actually, I mean, you're doing, this is, this, I mean, this is what you're doing right now. This is where we thought we were going to go with the whole Musa project and all that. But unfortunately, I mean, due to some little issues and most of us got married and got busy and life took over. And so, I mean, that's why things uh, didn't work out. Well, well like, it's, I mean, it's, you know, like, it, it gives me great joy to see that you're actually living what we intended, what we intended to do. Bring, bring in, I mean, bringing uh, scholars over and bringing our brothers over to help 
encourage youth and teach them the deen, the way they can relate to it. I think that's very important. That, the whole idea of Musab was to create an avenue where the youth could relate. No judgments. I mean, come with whatever you want. We tell come you. To faith just as you are. Exactly. We mm -hmm. tell you. I mean, we're going through the same thing. And this is how we went. Through, uh, we, 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 we treated the whole process. And also, it's, it was supposed to be an avenue where you'd come without judgments as a youth. And you'd be helped. I mean, whatever issue you have, you'll, be, you'll, you'll, be, you'll discuss the issue and find the solution to the mm -hmm. problem. That, that was the whole idea. And well, like, it gives me great joy to see that you're, li you're actually living the, the whole, you're doing the whole, the, you've bought the whole concept and even improved upon it. So it's, it's, you know, it's, we, it's good. We, we ask Allah that he mm -hmm. accept it and we ask Allah that he put barakah and increase us in sincerity. Uh, I mean, Zaradin, I mean, I mean. coming back again to your trip, right? Yeah. At that moment whereby you met your free, you know, your cousin and he had an impact in your life, yeah. what step did you take at that moment as a young person? Well, um, at first, I think, I don't know if my experience is actually the same with others, but at first, when, when I got interested in the deen, I started reading so many books and I think perhaps I don't know if that was a mistake or not but I started reading on my own uh. or we started meeting yeah, because we started reading on our own right. and I think for to, to a certain extent that caused a lot of problems mm. because I mean and now I know because now I know I mean in hindsight now I know it was probably a mistake because we, we kept on taking texts and reading and doing our research and then suddenly I don't know if Yashik, I don't know if you can relate to that Yashik, but suddenly when you start when, when you are when you start learning the deen, yeah. suddenly there's this fire inside this you. This overzealousness. Exactly. Yeah. That, I think that's the word, overzealousness. You, you start becoming so overzealous and then suddenly everybody is just a kafir. You become, uh, more, you, you become yeah. more of the like haram police and the kafir police. Haram, 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 haram. haram. Exactly. <laughs> everybody, anybody you see on the road, Kawai, I mean, not raising, not, not raising his trousers and not keeping a beard, suddenly he's out of the deen. If you've, you've taken him out. And, I mean, that's extremism in that sense. You start having that... And a lot of it had to do with ignorance, obviously, and half-baked knowledge. Now I realize that anyway, but then you, you, didn't, you didn't see us. I mean, you, then you, you come in contact with this text and then this audios of some, some scholars and all that. You don't know which, is, which are the real scholars, which aren't the real scholars. You just take on information here and so there. So many YouTube shakes. Ah, wallahi, wallahi, yeah, it's just, it's just so you, you don't know how to discern which is right and which is wrong. And so you just take out all this information. And as a young guy with so much energy and passion, mm. You just want to go and start sl slaughtering people on the road and all that. So, <laughs> so, 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 so that, that's how it started. Yeah, anyway. Well, Alhamdulillah, I mean, after I, I, I ended up going for my master's, as, as I mentioned, in Bradford, and I met some very, very good brothers, which, I mean, till today, I mean, I haven't kept in touch with them, and which is a fault of mine, but each time I remember them, Wallahi, they have a special place in my heart because of the way I was received there. I mean, there's in Bradford, I don't know those of you, those who went to the UK, UK they know of Bradford used to be, is, is like a Muslim community. Mm. There are a lot of Pakistans, Pakistanis there anyway. Right. So I'm um, well, like the way they, and Afghanis, all those ones. So they, I went there, I don't know, they received me very well and they started teaching me the deen. Mm. Well, like, I mean, well, like, so it was very amazing. The whole brotherhood there, it was so amazing. From the day I went there to, I mean, the way they just treated me, it was so, so good. Well, like, Sheik, so... They built a community and everything. They, they had an uh, Islamic society there. So their akhlaq played a major role. Uh, in fact, it was just their akhlaq, my shaykh. Wallahi. I mean, the way I, I didn't, they helped me look for accommodation. I think for the first week, I can remember, I, did, I didn't think I even spent a penny there when I went for the first week. Hmm. Each time I go, ah, no, 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 this is your guest. Wallahi. They, 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 they buy this, they go, they, they call me for tea at night. And I, so that, that was, I mean, from there, I had, from there, we'll go to these Islamic circles and all that. Then within them, they will choose, maybe for instance, this week, but the Shuremi, the one who's going to go, go and study on the topic of um, akhlaq or akida, for instance, or then you're going to teach us whatever mm. you studied there. That was how it started. They, then they'll do that. Then they kept on rotating and rotating. And that's how it's going to be from this brother this week, the next brother this week. I mean, that's how they did. And so it's, it, it kind of put this pressure on you to go and learn more about the deen. Mm. I mean, and where you, they, they, they were, I mean, obviously there are some people of uh, higher knowledge there. So where you went wrong, they would correct you, obviously. So it's, it's not like you just come and freestyle there and just say whatever you want. There are people there, obviously, who after you finish talking, they'll say, okay, Jazakallah, khair and all that, but this here and here, this is, maybe you misunderstood this part. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam meant. Mm. This is what the verse of the Quran actually meant. They would, they would correct you. And so, I mean, from there, I thought, I mean, why not? Why, why not? I mean, I, I had this group of friends in Nigeria and all, all we do is just meet up, eat, talk about soccer. And I mean, but why, why not? Why not the Why not the deen? Why not the deen? So I mean, I, 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 I spoke to them, I said, when we go back, this is, this, these are the th kind of things we should start. And khalas, I mean, a few years later, I think we started in the, the house of one of my friends, yeah, Musetu. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so from there, we, we had a st place in Area 11, and that's how it started. And a lot of people I know, even though now we're not as active, but a lot of people I know, 
they, they tell me, I mean, Musab actually yeah, had, I, I had, had a big impact on I them. benefited a lot. And you know, that was when I went to Alikma University. And I I opened a branch in Alikma yes, University. You did. Where I became the chairman then. Exactly. And subhanAllah, you know, it had so much impact there because the foundation was able to sponsor students to study Islamic studies and Arabic. So I think uh, what you, you know, if, if these people haven't had that great impact on you when you came to the UK yeah. with their akhlaq, with the way they dealt with you, with the way they, did, you know, they interacted with you, yeah. perhaps, yeah, and we, 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 perhaps you wouldn't have achieved what you've achieved today. Yeah, exactly. I don't know you get my point. Yeah. So for every Muslim out there, we need to be able to portray Islam in a way that it is our character. And have you noticed something that anytime a Sahabi comes to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and asks him, give me an advice, the Prophet ﷺ always talk about good character. Very important. The man that came and said, advise me, he said, don't get angry, don't get angry, don't get angry. And yeah. almost three, you know, three times he, asked, he said that. This is to show you how important good character is. And when Allah was, you know, qualifying the best man of Khan Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't say you're the best man because of the Arab and the likes of He said, wa inna khala ala khuluqin azim. Yeah. Because you you're the bad, you know you you have the best of character. So I think character plays a major role in trying to spread the message. It is. Well, it, it goes a, a long way. It does, yeah, Sheikh. Honestly, it does. I mean, I think sometimes there's a difference between you listening to a certain preacher or the next. I mean, mm -hmm. just the way they the approach. Sure. And and I think it's high time we as you we understood that whole process of uh, the youth now. They don't like that. I mean, as straightforward as approach. I'm not saying you should be soft in your da'wah or anything like that. I mean, you say the truth as it is. But sometimes, I mean, there's so much happening. That straightforward approach just sometimes, I mean, it's good to understand. Let them speak, understand them, then speak to them from, to them from a place of understanding. Yeah. yeah, rather than just attacking, attacking, attacking all the time. Mm -hmm. so I think it's, it's quite understandable. You said akhlaq. Akhlaq, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very good principle for you to so understand. You know, uh, Zara Dean, most of the times you, we, we tend to have our iman go up and go low, mashallah. At times we feel, you know, they, I see you be like, what the hell is happening to the astaghfirullah, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when your iman is low, personally, what do you do? Or does your iman doesn't go low? Ah, subhanallah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any Muslim that can actually say his iman doesn't go low. But um, personally, well, I have, I'd say my, my, my routine is, I have a, I have some audio files which of some certain scholars which mm -hmm. I listen to. Oh. Yes, they, they, they kind of, and uh, sometimes I listen to um, the lives of the Sahaba, okay. as well some some of the stories of lives of to, to to listen to how they conducted themselves and all that because I always try to compare. Obviously, I, I try to compare myself. I mean, so or try to belittle myself. I think that's the right word when it comes to them. I mean, for them, when I, when I listen to their lives or read their stories, I, I try to compare myself, and I know I'm nowhere near. Mm and the struggles they had and all that. So it kind of, it, it kind of uh, it humbles me in a way. It kind of it, it humbles me. So I bring myself down to earth. Obviously, Quran plays um, a, a big part as well. I mean, I try to make sure a day doesn't go by without me trying to open the Mus'haf and try to read and try to ponder upon the verses of Allah. Right. Sometimes it gets, uh, it gets overwhelming, obviously, with your day-to-day -day activities. So I make sure, at the very least, I, I listen to the Quran, even if I can't read it. Mm. I listen to it and obviously I have my, my shuyukh who when I listen to the recitation, I mean it just it breaks my heart, honestly. I I don't I don't want to play preferences. I mean we, I'm sure we all have our own different yeah, yeah. Uh, but Shatri. You just made me remember uh, <laughs> yeah. Yani, uh, Sheikh Nurain, may Allah have mercy yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever yeah, yeah. I listen to his recitation, it's so calming and exactly. it makes me remember the Lord of the world. May Allah exactly. make it easy for us. So, all. those are part of the, the, the routines, I guess I could, I could tell you. Mm. Uh, meeting brothers like you, Allah, Sheikh, I know you, you I, I can't overstate the importance of people meeting people like you. And uh, people, all other brothers as well in the deen, just meeting them, Allah, just five minutes, ten minutes, meeting them, just. The day, I mean, sometimes it's good to get out of the world and try to meet people who will remind you of the Akhirah. It's, it's actually, it's very important, Walash, because we this world is very, you tend to get so many things happening. So many things happening. It's, it moves so fast. Before you know it now, it's Maghrib, it's Shah. It's, time is just moving so fast, Walash. So the little you can do, take out of your time, just remember Allah, little to meet brothers and try to remind you. These this little things you do, honestly, it's... And whenever I go and you listen to this here, even if you're traveling or you're moving around, try to put on a tape and listen to some few things, some few lectures and all that. Even on the way, you can try to. These are all Iman boosters, in my own opinion, anyway. Those are things that help me out as well. Yeah, brothers, mm -hmm. you spoke about time just now. 
when you think about the day you're going to return back to your maker, what first comes to your mind? <laughs> it's scary, Ashif. Honestly, I, I, it's, it's a thought. I ha it's something I think about every night before I go to bed. I, I, I just close my eyes and think, I mean, what's, what have I done? What have, what have, how would I be remembered in this? What have I done? I mean, how would I meet my Lord? These are things that scare me. And that's why even before I go to each time, I try to make sure. I mean, I'm someone who, who is actually very scared of debt. Not death, debt. Hmm. And this time, bashi. Yeah. That's, that's, I mean, so I try to make sure I have my affairs in order. So I make sure I, 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 write, I update my will. And all that, if I, those I owe, those who owe me, all these things I updated. Because yeah, actually, we, uh, we can't be sure of we're, we're going to wake up. I mean, we just, just recently, I mean, I'm sure you've heard of the family that died, uh, as a family of seven or so that died in a car accident. So it's, it's something that it can happen to any of us. Mm. So, I mean, death is something that we have to, it's, it's, it's a scary thought, yeah, Sheikh, Allah, it's a scary thought. But I, I, I'm confident, I mean, I, in a way, I, I, it's a balance. Even though I'm scared of what I might face, I'm still hopeful that as a Muslim, I mean, at least, I've, at the very least, I've done enough to, 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 get, I mean, to, to obtain the mercy of Allah. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I've done that because we don't want to, I mean, we don't serve, we don't want despair in our lives. We don't want, I mean, we serve a very merciful Lord. So we, we're not Muslims, we don't, we're not people who despair, who just think, I mean, we're, we're, it's, Allah is not going to forgive us and all that. We, it's, so you have to balance, you have to have that balance between hope and fear anyway. Mm. So I try, in as much as I fear the hellfire, I fear as, I mean, as Umar ibn Khattab used to say, I mean, if he was, if, 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 if an, on the day of judgment, a caller calls that he, only one person is going to enter the hellfire, he's very sure it's going to be him. Uh, I mean, th these are people that they've been promised Jannah. These are, these are the kind of thoughts that are in their mind. No, I mean, but right now, we think we're the first to Jannah already in, in our minds. So we have to, uh, that, that balance, I, I have that balance all the time. I know that, yes, Hellfire is, is real and all that, but I still have hope that... Live in between fear and hope. Live in between, I mean, that, that, that balance is very difficult, Yashi Kuala. It's, it's very difficult. When, once, when, when you read the verses of mercy of Allah, you become very, I mean, complacent. Mm. Because Allah is so merciful, Wallahi. I mean, but suddenly when you turn and read the verses of punishment, you know the, the punishment of Allah is real as well. And you can't be sure you're the way, you're part of those who Allah is going to forgive. 100%. So it's all, it's, it's that trying to find that balance. And Allah, I struggle with it every day. I don't know, for, I don't know about you, Ashik. You know, uh, for me, what I try to make sure is that um, my good deeds outweigh my bad deeds in a day. So I try as possible to make sure that I, I, I put that in place. And you know, for people like me who are always on media, who are being seen on TV, every day we battle with sincerity. You know, because you are trying to do it for Allah. You are hoping that Allah accepted. You are hoping that uh, Allah wouldn't use it against you on the day you return back to Him. So every day you try, you try your best. But I got to realize that the hidden deeds I will do are much more better than even the one that people mm -hmm. know. Because that I'm sure about. Exactly. That I'm sure about. That, yeah, Allah, I did this for your sake. Yeah, Allah, mm -hmm. yeah, Allah, please accept it. Please exactly. accept it. And it goes a long way. So, you know, the love of every man is known by that which he perfect. And uh, if you try to perfect what is good, Allah will put barakah. And, uh, you know, just, just hope that you just you need to know that Allah doesn't need your deeds. Subhanallah. <laughs> He uh, <laughs> he's upon all able. Exactly. All we just want is for him to have mercy on us. Like people will ask you, why do you keep doing this? You do this, that, I will go here, do this, you reject this, you did that. Wallah, brother, we want the money. You know, we want the, we want to go out there, get everything. But in as much as we want that, we've got to invest in our akhirah. You go to the university, you spend four years getting a degree, spend another two years getting a master's, get another three years getting a doctorate degree. All because you want to get a meal ticket in the dunya. What is in the dunya? But how about you investing in your akhirah? How about you putting money to see that, ah, oh, mashallah, tabarakallah, I want to go get jannah with this. I put this, I buy this. People don't do this. Do you know that? No. You know, when, people, when you tell people of a masjid, pro, you know, we have a masjid now, please can you do ABC? People actually remove 100 naira, 200 to support. Habibi, yani, you have the money. If it was a marriage now, you see people bringing out so much huge of cash. So my advice to everyone watching this right now is that begin to invest in your akhirah. 
because this life is too short. People are dying when COVID-19. People are having COVID. La ilaha illallah. It might be you. You might die tomorrow. Yeah. Every person I've done therapy with that had COVID-19, the moment I speak to them, they say, Shurem, I was so scared. Well, I felt as if I'm going to die. I want to go back to my Lord. Now they are fine. The question we ask these people is this. Have you gone back to your Lord? Have you tried an effort? Yeah, it's not easy, just the way you said. But every day we need to put effort. We need to see that, you know, we are putting effort to see that Allah has mercy on us. And when we die, Allah will be pleased with us. And subhanAllah, you know, you ask kullu abdin ala ma A person will be resurrected upon what he used to do. Yeah. So, you know, brothers Ardin, I think, uh, you know, to all, and all the viewers watching us out there, I think we really need to think about ourselves. You know, just, just take a moment right now. Take a moment. What is your relationship with your maker? You know, you need to reconcile it. You know, those friends of yours, are they really making you better or are they really making you worse? If they are making you worse, do the delete button, yeah, yeah, baby. <laughs> if you can't make them better, fine. <laughs> Wallah, it's, it's scary. I'm even lost of, you know, <laughs> short of words or lost of what I can tell you. But we ask a lot to make it easy. Amen. Habibi, Amen. last words. A lot of older people are dying due to COVID-19. A lot of older people. And from our viewers, we have so much, so many older people who are watching the show. Yeah. And some have COVID-19 that are watching us perhaps right now. What message do you have for them for hope? Well, first of all, I think I'd, I'd advise them to abide by the regulations. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, mask up, uh, do the whole social distancing thing as much as we can, use the hand sanitizers. And I think I, I, I listened on radio a while back that the vaccines are going to be available as well in Nigeria quite pretty soon. So that, that, that is, I mean, so that I think on your, on your own part, I think that much you can do. And obviously you can't, we have to keep, keep praying, keep making dua. We hope that, I mean, this whole period, I mean, 2020 entirely, we hope that Allah will, will look at it and just give us an, a reward because we hope it's a purification for all of us because yeah. 2020 was a really trying time for everyone in the whole world Allah. so we hope allah would it to be a purification for all the muslims mm. i mean it's 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 a, it's a really trying time and we still aren't rid of the whole COVID thing it seems like we're going to we might actually live with it for a long time now to go mm. so yes i um, abide by the rules do i mean we have to keep praying we have to know that this is a test from allah right. and we have to do uh introspection we have to go back and do introspect go back look at ourselves and why allah is actually mm -hmm. trying us i mean these are all things that we cause with our own hands these are our sins and that, that is that is the way they, the self used to think about things i mean even well, when something happens to them in their lives they say i mean well even even if i mean well, well, even if their wives when their wives are angry at them mm -hmm. they, they go back they say i mean this is because of my sin yes, allah. and they look at themselves i mean they, they try to become better so these are trials that allah has tried the muslims to purify us so we go back to him. So we have to we have to think about him. The things we do, well, I shake it. We, I don't I mean there's no. We, have, we don't have time, but we can still we can mention a lot of things that could be a consequence of, of this 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 COVID nineteen is a consequence of the things we do, the sins we commit as Muslims. So we have to, well, we have to we have to go back. The whole social media has created a whole generation now that everybody everybody just says what he wants now, without consequences. Right. I mean this. Allah, I mean it could be that Allah just looked at one of it and. He's punishing, of, uh, punishing us for the sins of one person. We, we don't know that. So we just have to become better Muslims and keep praying. And we ask Allah for, for, uh, to make it a purification for all of us. And that, yeah. he, he, I mean, we, we, the whole, this whole time, it, it, it passes. I mean, Allah, it's this, uh, this uh, pandemic. The, the Sahaba had pandemics and all that. They've, they lived through it. And some of them had Shahada in that period. And we ask the Allah that those who have passed away during this period, Allah grants them Shahada as I mean, well. So I think that's the little advice I can give. But we have to we have to abide by these little two things. I mean, yeah, Sheikh. Even not, not if, if not for yourself, but for the elderly, as okay. you mentioned. Sure. The simple as, as simple as putting up putting on a mask, it's it can make a difference, okay. as they say. So why not? It won't take anything out of you. 100%. That's what I mean. Abibi, Jazakallah mm. Khair. Jazakallah Khair, yeah, Sheikh. Just I mean. agreed to be on the camera. <laughs> I, 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 didn't, I didn't agree, yeah, Sheikh. You forced me on the camera. And I'm glad you went for you. The first, the enforcement was forced on you. No, no problem, yeah, Sheikh. Okay. May Allah bless and, you. Abibi. I ask Allah, Allah to forgive my shortcomings. I mean, whatever shortcomings or mistakes I've made are from myself. Yes, whatever good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah Khair, yeah, Habibi. May Allah preserve us, preserve you for us. You know, we're so we keep benefiting from you. We're going to chill in Jannah. You know what I want in Jannah, Habibi? Huh? See me flying. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Exactly. <laughs> 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 to the whole did you know uh, studios and the whole did you know uh, 
Uh, everyone did you know, inshallah. Zakulah khair for having us here. Zakulah khair. Zakulah khair. Thank you very much. Alhamdulillah, dear viewers, we've come to the end of this episode. You've known what you need to know. We 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 thank Allah subhanahu wa taala for giving us opportunity. I'm glad I was able to drag Brother Zaradin down to the studio. May Allah bless him. Each and every one of you that have watched this right now, you know, it's not meant to miss. It was meant for you. It hasn't predestined for you. So what we need to do is to focus on ourselves. Where we need to fix, we fix. Where we need to adjust, we adjust. Where we need to, you know, acknowledge the name out of Allah, we do that. May Allah bless you all until the next episode. I leave you all in the care of the most gracious, most merciful. Mm -hmm.